Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yasari Dali Aputasari. I'm so sorry about uh, technology trouble. It's uh, I think it's challenging for the uh, online platform. Yes. Uh, my name is Yasari Dali Aputasari as a moderator. Welcome to the presentation and discussion session in Team Fight. Fight or religion building is part of a chapter in Four Nation book, Contagious Archipelago, collaboration book among IIA, Indonesian Institute of Architect Indonesia, PAM, Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia, Malaysia, ASA, the Association of Siamese Architect Thailand, and CIA, Singapore Institute of Architect. We have amazing speaker, uh, amazing presenter from Indonesia, Malaysia, and uh, Thailand. Uh, I want to uh, share uh, the agenda. Yeah. Uh, session one, we have the first speaker, the first presenter, architect Eko Prawoto with the uh, name of project Padusan from Indonesia, AAA. And the second, architect Ching Sao In, uh, the project is Masjid Cyber Jaya, Malaysia, PAM. And the uh, third presenter, Art Skarn Chai Yafat. Uh, the project Novice Living Quarter, uh, Thailand, ASA. Unfortunately, uh, architects Kam Chayawat can uh, uh, can present this project, but uh, he sent a video. We can uh, see the video. And the fourth presenters is only woman, the beautiful woman, um, Mrs. Elizabeth Cardoza. The project is Masjid Sultan Sulaiman, Malaysia, Hatif. Uh, the project is Masjid Al Irsyad, Indonesia, IAA. And uh, the, the session two is Q&A. Uh, every presenter have 10 minutes time to present the project. And all the speaker presentation, uh, we will discuss about each project. Any inquiry, question, opinion, and something idea pop up in your mind, please uh, does, doesn't hesitate to write in the column chat. We will go to the first speaker, architect Eko Prawoto with the project Padusan. Uh, before architect Eko Prawoto present this project, I will read the CV. Uh, I will end share first and Okay. Yeah. Mr. Eko Prawoto get a uh, Bachelor Architect Faculty of Engineering from Gajah Mada University and get master from the Berlage Institute Amsterdam and he have uh, he, uh, he has uh, about more than more 20 years experience from design architecture since 1994 uh, since uh, 2000 as a chief architect at Eko Prawata workshop uh, he not only architect, but also lecturer of the Department, uh, Department of Architecture Faculty of Engineering, Duta Wacana, Christian University. Uh, architect Eko Prawato, please, time is yours. Uh, thank you, Mbak Yasser. Uh, it has been a honor for me to present my simple, tiny work, actually. Um, I will start my uh, share screen. Actually, when this uh, project uh, get 
Indonesian uh, Architect Association, I was very surprised because this project is kind of not really clear whether this is architecture. Very simple, no, no technology. It's a very, very humble work. And it uh, located in a very to share it with you all. I think means uh, a place that we uh, clean ourselves before uh, we um, uh, taking part of a religious uh, what i believe which begin and it, and it is so we are not free actually in in doing architecture Architecture should be an integral part of the surrounding culturally. So this Padusan actually pilgrimage area, older, and Sendang Sono was designed by the late uh, architect uh, Yebe Mangun Wijaya, who he is a priest but also an architect and later he is a humanitarian activist. He's very famous. He passed away in 1999. Uh, his, um, his thinking has influenced uh, my uh, architecture practice a lot, I think. This is how it looks, a uh, very famous uh, Catholic uh, pilgrimage, which in a, uh, uh, Maria month, it, it's some sometime like May or October is a full of a pilgrim. It was a beautiful place uh, among the trees and how he respected the contour and also some uh, ornament, which in a way it uh, become a, a kind of a both feeling between uh, ancient sacred uh, Japanese uh, uh, space, like uh, a little bit uh, mis mysterious, but in a way it has also the, the vibrant of uh, modern, modern approach, uh, but it's not really modern using uh, industrialized material, but it's very much uh, crafted in a very, nice way, use a lot of uh, natural materials. And when I was asked uh, to repeat the long road of, of this uh, and it will end in the fame. So uh, this is a quite uh, challenging for me, how to place uh, this new facilities to be part of religious uh, facilities. So uh, from the program is very simple, just a place for washing your hand and feet, uh, feet. And it has also, facilities but It is more because I am active. 
so people like also to to visit this place. Uh, Pak Eko Prawoto. Hello. Hello, Pak Eko. I'm sorry. Uh, Maybe you can uh, off your camera because uh, because uh, the sound is not clearly. We are thinking that this place is, should be more. How do that? Okay, thank you. Yeah, this problem with net problem with network. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so the idea is how to to make connection between the natural landscape with the Padusan star and then enter the 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 long Via Dolorosa and then and Sendang Sono should be remain the Padusan is just the beginning place, the Sendang Sono. That's it. And I try to articulate uh, more uh, in the relationship with nature and not uh, treat it as uh, architecture. Next to the small river is the um, the main agriculture, the stream itself, the flowing, uh, which is uh, very uh, important and have a deep meaning uh, for us as a human being, regardless uh, the religion. But we as a human being, what is our important uh, source of life and then the stone the stone has become a uh, uh, main element it will be uh, reaching the uh, with the, the, the surrounding side, uh, it will give a sense of time, the beginning. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, sorry, I. Uh, I okay. Lost. <laughs> uh, okay, Pak, join again. Yeah, sorry. So I will, I will make it fast, I think. <laughs> uh, And it's all about pathway, about walk, about flow, about journey in a meditative sense. Uh, it's about uh, silent, uh, peaceful mind. Uh, this, I will explain this very simple in the middle of rice field uh, the, uh, place
I think Mr. Echo lost from the Zoom. Uh, maybe we can go to the second presenter. Uh, Mr. Echo can uh, present after the second presenter. We jump to Architect Ching Sao In. The project is uh, Masjid Cyberjaya Malaysia uh, Pam. I want to share the CV. Uh, architect Ching Sao In have a garis architect SDN BHD, uh, have a philosophy and vision of the architecture consultant from sorry. architecture yes. of idea. Um, sorry, yes, sorry. There is not yeah. my CV. There is not my CV. It's someone else's CV, but it's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, do you want to uh, share your CV, please? Uh, I don't have it with me now, but I think we can skip that. It's okay. I can okay. jump into the presentation oh. straight away. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sain. <laughs> no okay. I, I think the organizer have to uh, take care of so many people across so many countries, regions. Yes, yes. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, time uh, is yours. Yeah, I will, I will do a short presentation and then uh, if in case my network is not uh, well, uh, you feel free to alert me so that I can terminate it and then we can jump into a uh, next presenter and then my material, I can compile it and then I can put it online in the future for everyone if they want to uh, refer. So you just feel free to interrupt me if you, if you find my, my presentation is lagging. And uh, I also welcome everyone to maybe at, during the presentation, we can all turn of our uh, video and also the sound so that the, we clear up the network just in case the network uh, is overloaded with, during the presentation. I, I hope that will help, although we don't have many people inside here. Is that okay? Yeah, please, it's okay. I will turn off mine as well so that it's easier. I'll turn off my videos. So everyone can turn off their video so that it's, uh, it's smoother. Thank you. Um, for the most, uh, today I would just like to share um, some ideas uh, about the word uh, roots. Uh, I, will, I will try to explain them in uh, three parts, the history, climate, and people. The first part is history. Between 8th to 14th century, um, there is a period where many scholars uh, call it as an Islamic golden age. And this is actually uh, a kitab, uh, a manuscript. If you translate it literally, it means book of uh, tricks. But it's not really uh, magic tricks. It's actually a record of beautiful diagrams of vowels and also tubes. This is another ingenious drawing by Al Jazari. I, would you be able to guess roughly what is actually this drawing all about? It's actually a diagram of water rising device. And it's actually a mechanical and also mathematical uh, principle. If you can see the camshaft, the pivot, the valves, the piston, that make it become what we call as a modern day water pump. And this is actually a water wheel in Haman, Syria, between 9th to 12th century. 
it used the current of the river water and then the different pressure to raise the water through the pistons from the lower level to the aqueduct and the higher level. So it's actually the water pump in, in our modern sense. But the knowledge of this water pump, it doesn't really happen open, overnight during the Islamic golden age. It slowly grow through an academy and also a library that was set up during that time. They call it as a house of wisdom. In the academy, they collect books from different regions and translate texts that's from Greek and Syrian into Arabic. So the breakthrough during this period, this, this period it later also spread to other regions and passed down to other uh, civilization and now to our modern days. So if you look at cultural and knowledge in a history sense, we cannot look at history as one chapter alone. They are actually a continuity of the whole progress. The second part is on the idea of uh, climate. The Malay archipelago words is, was uh, originated from a book written by Alfred Russell Wallace. It's actually a documentation during his scientific expedition about geography, natural history, and also people of this region. And whenever we have a discourse of architecture of this re region, um, this image of traditional Malay house always come into our mind. And there has been extensive record on the form of the roof, the, the materials that we use on, 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 on the roof. But in actually, we are, there are lacking of discussion about how effective are these roofs, about different roof material, whether they are traditional or modern, what type of profile they are, what type of joint they are putting together, at what angle, and most importantly, how they actually work together with other building elements to create the atmosphere and the experience of the space. So this is a pitch roof. Um, pitch roof is very effective in our region because of the rainfall. It's channeling off the waters quickly. And then if you have an opening on the lower part of the roof, on the opposite side, you will have cross ventilation that will take out the hot air. The shape of the roof, however, it trap the hot air that rises to the top. Uh, the rising of the hot air is because molecule, when it's heated, they expand and they start to occupy the land that lands a less denser environment on a higher level and they start to float. So sometimes at the bottom, we will have a ceiling and the ceiling will actually allow the hot air to pass through at the lower level and then constrain the hot air only on the top part. But this solution, it poses another problem of maintenance and also services. And then uh, sometimes with a, with a pest problem. And in the case of the mosque, we have a check up on the roof. And by doing the little move up, the temperature of the buildings could actually drop to as much as four degrees from 35 to 31. And we have not only one, we have actually three tier of roof. This is the multi-tier of the roof, the color of the roof that reflect the sky. The jack roof with penchaka, penchaka langi at the top. The structure system of the roof. 
the interior of the main hall with the interplay of light and the roof. This knowledge of Jack Roof is not really uh, new. They are wisdom that has been existed in many old, beautiful public buildings. Surrounding the main hall, there are series of veranda, or we like to call it as a sarambi, together with walkway. They are sheltered by very thin roof and open at sides. The yellow color is the main hall. The green color is the veranda or sarambi. The main hall and the sarambi. The veranda of the sarambi, they are punctuated with opening. And one side, there was a body of water and the other side are plantings of trees. The water cooled down the temperature and the tree provides shades to part of the buildings. The tree in the veranda and the veranda like sarambi, when the congregations grow bigger, they allow the people to actually pray also in this semi-open space together with nature. The water feature. The north east eastern side of the of this site um, is actually facing a main vehicular road, and also. Uh, a, a row of new shops on the opposite side. Coincidentally, that is also the direction of the key blood. The orange street is actually the Mirab wall, the wall that indicates the direction of Kaaba in Mecca and direction where Muslims should face when they are praying. It's also a place where the mimba, where Iman stands to deliver sermons. And this very significant wall, we designed to use a ram earth wall, hand, hand compacted using cement and soil that come from that very land at the below. They are load bearing wall. So the thickness can go from three feet right up to sometimes five feet. So it becomes a buffer from the main vehicular road besides the garden at the front of it. And the layer of compaction of the earth, it signifies the importance of the wall, but at the same time, it's very natural as a backdrop. The third part is about the people. The mosque is built with hands of many true passions and also hard works. People involved in the projects, they come from diversity of background. Builders who know what works and what doesn't, who have the cost of material in the back of their palm. Workers who have the skill and also at the same time willing to try. and many, many, many others that comes from regardless of their race, gender, or religion even. Among all of them, especially Ku, who actually pull everyone together, and they are, he's down to earth that bonds all of us. And Alex, who always there, whenever we need him. Nadia, who organized everything in the drawings and set the tone of the project. And Camilla, she bite the bullets, improve the design and push it to this exquisite level that you can see now. And Daphne, she always plugged the hole, helping in every way she, she can. But all this wouldn't be happened without the clients 
who we often call him as uh, his title, Tan Sri. But we should remember him more in his name, Mustafa Kamal. The final slide, I would like to show a photo. Um, this is a group of people in Jutra's design workshop, a practice where I was uh, formerly a director and also a partner. The project remind me of a trip that we made during Sri Lanka. We took a train leaving the capital of Colombo to a, to a small town down south along the coastal line. It was late afternoon, evening. The train was packed like a sardine. People mostly are workers. They just came off to the work. Inside the train, there is no aircon, no electricity, no lighting. It was very, very primitive. The train door was kept open, even when the train is moving. As the train moved, we can see through their openings, one side is actually a brief taking view of the sea, and the other side is all these informal, very casual, very primitive houses where all the workers live. And the wind is blowing through the trains as they move. The photo was taken when we arrived at the station, waiting the bus to pick us up for the next, for the next uh, destination. This trip in Sri Lanka remind me of a humble experience. Remind me about history, climate, and people. Thank you. Thank you very much, architect Ching Sao. In it's a very deep meaning uh, for the uh, Moscow building. It's a very amazing presentation. Uh, I see. Mr. Eko Prawoto join again. Uh, can present again, Pak Eko Prawoto. Can I continue a little bit? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yes. It's okay, Pak. Yeah. Please, time is yours, Pak. Thank you. I just uh, continue a little bit. Um, this is the. Uh, the section or the connection between the river part, which is very low, and then the uh, the beginning of the uh, pilgrimage road. Uh, so we make a kind of ramp to allow all people or even people uh, using wheelchair to climb up. And there is also a stair straight up. So in communication with uh, villagers, yeah, we use a very simple uh, sketches and I often came to the site and then talk to the worker and explain about everything. So um, it is a very uh, simple communication, but very effective because if I provide a computer drawing, maybe they don't really, uh, understand about about that uh, means of communication so we rather use a simple sketches uh, on the side um, this really a kind of a handmade <laughs> handmade structure a lot of uh, mm, manual work um, especially done by uh, women uh, putting stones uh, one by one so the detail is uh, really uh, manual in a way. Yeah. So we use a lot of uh, river, uh, river stones uh, to make the structure. Actually, this is separate, uh, separating a wall between the, the ablution place and then the Baptist tray. And we divide it into two groups for women and for men. I hope that in the future, uh, this wall will be accepted by the nature and the moss grow and it's become like a very 
uh, ancient or even archaic uh, ruins uh, to to blend with the nature. This is uh, some some detail of the the experience of the space with the various uh, patchwork of the stones. This is the ramp that we climb up and to meet the the pilgrimage road. And you could see here from the surrounding, uh, there are uh, four roof with holes uh, to allow the light uh, come through. And below it's just a, a place for baptistry. And this is how the uh, how it looks uh, blended with the surrounding nature. And yeah, this is just a, a small hope that maybe Patusan, even if it is very tiny, small, humble project with uh, no technology at all done by hand with the villagers, it's a kind of a silent whisper in the landscape uh, for the people to enjoy the meditative, meditative journey uh, to Sendang Sono. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Pa Eko Prewoto. Uh, actually, I already seen the presentation more than one, but then and I'm always speechless because I exploring is uh, the very uh, beautiful and deep meaning. Okay, the we are go to the next uh, speaker, uh, architect Skarn Chai Iachat. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he can join. I will share uh, his CV. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Skarn Chayawat architect. Uh, he got the uh, bachelor architecture from the Chulalongkorn University, Bangkok, Thailand. And uh, he has a uh, experience design almost 10 years since 2011 and since 2000 he has a scar ltd as a founder uh, director architect and he got award yeah as an architectural design award 2018. I will share uh, this video. from Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, is the video is clear? Hello? I need a response. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Oh, okay. And I'm going to present you a project called Novice Living Quarters in Putanimit Temple. So, let me share the screen. So, um, um, Putanimit Temple is located in the northeastern part of Thailand in a province called Udon Thani. Um, the temple is served as a place to gather people in the community since a very long time ago. And oh, it's not only a place to gather people, but it is also a school. So family who cannot afford to send their son 
sons to public school, they would send their sons to this temple to enroll as novice monks. And um, the novices, they, they would stay at the temple as a boarding school. And this is how, this is how the dormitory look like. And since the number of the novices increase, the school required more rooms for the novices to stay. So the headmaster monk approached us and asked us to design a new dormitory for them. And um, when we visited the site, we, we found that in order to build a new dormitory, um, we have to cut down a lot of trees. So we try to find an, an alternative. And during the site inspection, we stumbled upon this abandoned building. Um, it was used as a storage building and the condition was not quite good. The space was a little bit too dark, so nobody really used this space. Then we um, came up with a plan to renovate this um, abandoned building into a new dormitory. So this way we not only save the trees, but the structural cost that we could save from um, the old structure could be used to build a new um, library for the, for the school as well. So all of this could be done with the um, same amount of the proposed budget. And then we started to work with the monks and the novices. And um, so we have, we had workshops with them. And every time that we went to the site, we try to see how the novices like to live. And we, um, we found that the novices are not different from normal kids at all. They actually are quite naughty and they like to stay in a group and um, they like to stay in a place where the elder monks could not easily inspect them. So after several months, we came up with this proposal. So you can see the building in the middle is the renovated dormitory. And on the right hand side is the bathroom building. And on the left is the newly built library which connects to the school building. And in front of the buildings is the um, um, public plaza, which occasionally used to gather people in the community when they have events. And this is how it looked inside of the abandoned building at first. As I mentioned, it uses, has a storage rooms. So we um, decided to um, take off this highlighted ceiling to let the daylight get in. And then we, we change it into this um, bedroom for the novices. So each bedroom could accommodate around four to five novices. And this is the space in front of the storage rooms. So it was quite dark and um, not inviting at all. So nobody really used the space. It's kind of a rest space of the temple. So we decided to, to keep only the highlighted beams and columns. And then we added on only the um, necessary architectural elements to turn it into this common space for the novices. So they use this space for, um, for their leisure time to gather, to have to be with their friends or sometimes they do their homework at this area. And you can see on the left-hand side is the um, semen ventilation blocks, which are tilted at an angle, which provide privacy for the novices behind the wall. So when you look from the public plaza, you can barely see what's happening behind the wall so the novices can you know can um, can have their privacy and also they are not um, and they are 
comfortable at the same time because of the ventilation blocks with, which allow daylight and you know ventilation for the novices behind the wall. And this is the bathroom behind the dormitory. You can see the rope hanging lines here, which act as a blind to give the novices privacy from the public road nearby without having to build any permanent structure. And on the left-hand side of the dormitory is the library, library building, which um, connects to the school building. So you can see from the cross section here on the left hand side, the existing school building, um, the wall of the building reflects the sunlight into the library. So um, they could get the indirect sunlight for reading in the library and also protecting the books from the direct daylight. So you can see the, the right hand side is the south. Um, so the roof is tilted, slanted to the south direction to prevent um, the hot sun. And on the left-hand side, you can see there are clear story windows to allow indirect sunlight to get into the space. So they have indirect daylight for reading. And the floor is raised to match with the existing school floor level to, so they can connect to the school and also it, um, promote natural ventilation as well. And you can see here that the books are not touched by uh, direct sunlight, so, so uh, um, it prolongs the lifespan of the books in the library. And the amount of daylight, which is good for reading so um, let me finish with this video that we went to took from the site. So this is um, very early in the morning around four to five a.m. The novices, they woke up and they're preparing themselves before they go out to collect arms from the people in the community. We were quite lucky when we went to, to film this because it was actually the graduation day for these, these novices. So they're taking good photos. You can see um, behind the trees is the dormitory and the library is on the left hand side. And this is when the family of the monks Okay, and to visit. This is the community space. And every evening they would have to um, clean the plaza, clean the leaves, the library. Actually, during that time, they would not have to um, turn on any artificial light because the, the indirect sunlight is already enough for reading. At the back of the dormitory, the 
the bathing area, you can see here, there's a public road behind. Bathing area. In the night before they go to bed. And anything, this is it. Thank you very much. It's very simple, natural, and really respond the context of locality. Uh, sadly, he uh, he didn't join. Yeah. Uh, okay. We will move to the next presenter. Um, Mrs. Elizabeth Cordoza, the project uh, about Masjid Sultan Suleiman, Malaysia, PAM. Uh, I will share uh, her CV. Hi, Ibu Resuri. This is Elizabeth. How about um, I introduce myself? Oh, it's and okay. Then, and then we can, yeah, you know, I'm looking for your CV. More quickly, yes. yes so why don't it. why don't we just move? Um, I'll keep my video off so that we're um, respecting, you know, that that in case uh, we have problems with the bandwidth. Is that yeah. okay? Um, okay. Uh, can I just ask um, uh, the person who's assisting me to start sharing my slides? Thank you, uh, Shaf. Um, and I will, thank you. So can we have the first slide, please? I thought, um, first of all, you know, thank you for the invitation. I want to say that um, what, in contrast to all of what has been said before, um, I'm not an architect. Uh, I worked on this with uh, the um, design architect and the conservation architect. I work as a conservator. And uh, this project was to restore uh, the Sultan Sulaiman, uh, Masjid Diraja Sultan Sulaiman in Kelang, Malaysia. And we did this over a period of uh, three to four years. The restoration itself took about two and a half years. But um, I thought that, you know, I just want to share with you that in contrast to what we just saw, this is extremely, can I have the next slide, please? An extremely grand building. And I want to show you the changes that happened to this place over time. When it was officially opened uh, in, uh, in June 1933, this was the largest uh, mosque in the Federated Malay States. Um, and it was built to celebrate uh, the 35th reign of that Sultan at that time. And the mosque is uh, named after him. And in uh, 2012, it uh, uh, was declared a National Heritage Building. So it, it's extremely grand. Uh, compared, like I say, with, with what we've seen uh, before this. The original design, as you see, of the mosque uh, was an octagonal shape uh, building it had, within a garden setting. So the whole idea of it being within a natural setting is actually sort of reflective of some of the other, uh, all of the other projects that have come uh, before this actually have been shown and shared before this. But the, the scale, I think, is really, in contrast, you know, pretty monumental. Um, and it was done without, unlike uh, all the other projects, which had very strong input uh, from uh, the local community. The restoration in this particular case had very strong input from um, 
the royal uh, household, the Sultan himself, who took particular interest in this. And of course, the religious department, because they wanted to make sure that what work that was undertaken, you know, met with their requirements. And can I have the next slide, please? This project was done, therefore, this is the brief. I mean, we were, it was done in the spirit of conservation. So we had to restore it. We had, uh, there were elements of modern interventions uh, in terms of upgrading existing facilities, uh, you know, electrical, electric, the, the, the M&E side, uh, you know, and other services that needed to be provided for the career um, to respond to present day needs and present day practices. But the overall approach I think was um, really the mandate was presented by the Sultan himself. And it was to restore it back to the original 1933 form. But when we were looking at it, we saw that actually in the 1960s and 1970s, it had been expanded to accommodate uh, more people, a, a larger, a growing congregation. And uh, the decision was taken to retain those sections because they were as uh, they were done, you know, in terms of sensitivity and also in terms of ensuring that we met the, uh, the needs of, of the congregation and what their expectation was. So, but because it was a National Heritage Building, we had also to make sure that we complied with the guidelines uh, for this as a, a, a monumental structure. So we had to use our, um, you know, good senses, I suppose, if you want to say, um, in working with uh, the authorities um, in, in the process. Um, may I have the next slide, please? So this is the main prayer hall. When we looked at it, if you look at the top photo, it was what it was uh, as it was originally designed in uh, 1933. And when we first entered, uh, you know, took on uh, the brief and looking at the structure and the dilapidation, we noticed that actually pretty much it remained more or less the same, except that there was some uh, physical changes and in the investigation we found you know we, we were able to um, identify which were the new additions and uh, what were the renovations and the red carpet uh, you know uh, kind of stands out. Um, can I just have the next uh, part please? Okay just keep it here. So when we restored it if you look at this photo it of the main prayer hall it um, looks exactly like what it used to look like in 1933. And that was the intention. So we met the, the obligation um, for uh, restoration and conservation. And what is delightful about this building, I think is, um, can I just, can you just press next please? Is this incredible glass, inner glass dome because Talk about light, and, and I think the earlier project talked about, you know, letting light in, and, and actually even the, the, the first two projects uh, that, that were presented also talked about, you know, looking at the, the, our climate and the nature of it. But in this particular case, it's, it's hugely celebratory of color, and um, which was something that was quite a challenge because if you look at the photo on the bottom left, you will see that actually a lot of the color apart from the carpet, you know, was quite muted because the rest of it was um, sort of in a sense lost because of the, the impact of, of the red carpet. Um, may I have the next slide, please? The original mosque was designed to accommodate a congregation of 500 people. Um, but as we, um, but over the years, it had been expanded to accommodate um, 1,500 people. And what uh, we see here is the, uh, the mihrab, which uh, was one very special feature within, um, from a religious perspective, because if you're talking about faith, you know, this, this in a sense is key and critical um, to the sensibility and the form and function of the mosque. And if you look at the photo, the leftmost photo, you will see that actually it had been, there were a GRC panels that had been added to it. The manner in which it was treated was very much, not quite um, take bearing in mind the original 
um, 1930s Art Deco style design. And this is sort of, sort of more modern geometric shaped. But in, once we remove the carpet, what we found underneath is this um, quite amazing uh, floor, which uh, was marble and, and had this inserted glass, uh, thick glass, amber glass uh, pattern, a colored light. And if you click the next part to it, please, you will see that when we restored it, we were able to bring back the sense again. And part of the sensibility is because in reading or in investigating um, the early literature and the early writing about the mosque and the way in which it was described, it talks about it not just being grand and colorful, but it also talks about the whole place being bathed in gold and with a golden light. And I think that this whole idea of spirituality, you know, and light and, and color and this vibrancy is something that's really well demonstrated uh, here. Um, may I have the next slide, please? Another important um, part of the uh, restoration, but also obviously part of the obligations of, of uh, Muslims when they come to pray is the uh, ablution uh, pool. And here you will see on the top uh, image was the original form, which was a pool. It was a sunken pool. But when we took, when we got um, access or when we were told, you know, uh, when we got the project, um, the, this pool had disappeared. It had been covered over. Um, we didn't know whether it had been, you know, the, 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 the pool, the sunken pool remained. And we saw instead there were two above ground tanks that were built. So the space looks cramped. It looks quite uninviting. And a lot of the karya didn't actually like to use it. So in the investigation, what we were able to do during the conservation work, um, when we removed the, the above ground tanks, water tanks, uh, uh, ablution tanks, we found below, can I have the next slide please? We found below that the original um, pool was still there. So the, the, the conservation um, and restoration was to reverse and to bring back that. But there were considerations and concerns, not just from the Korea, but from you know the uh, the local authorities, that oh, what if people you know, health and safety considerations? What if people fall into it? You know what would happen, etc. So we have done certain uh, interventions uh, to to provide you know for this safety standards. Uh, we've added in glass railings, you know, it, we, we were installed so that nobody could accidentally fall into the pool. We added new ablution taps um, so that actually people are not taking ablution uh, by having to walk down to the, to the water, but actually sort of in a more modern, in a more contemporary style. And um, one of the things that the older generation remembered this pool and they, remembered as they were children, you know, playing mischievously, swimming in this pool as if it was their swimming pool, you know, to cool off in hot weather. So this is something that we, we were able to reverse. Um, may I have the next slide, please? But this became a challenge. Uh, this, this is the entrance to the mosque. And if you look at the top photo, that was what we saw. Um, there were clearly uh, some decorative elements there, but they were all painted white and they had all been covered over. And as we were doing our investigation, we actually uncovered um, a lot of color in this. Um, can I have the next, please? And in the restoration process, we were able to bring back what was there originally um, by matching uh, the original design, uh, matching, you know, swatches of uh, color that the traces of color that had remained. And this was the outside. Can we just, can I have the next slide, please? And this was inside. When you entered the mosque, again, it looked, you know, um, it was there, but the, the top photo shows what was covered. Actually, we didn't actually get to see this barrel vault, high barrel vault, two-story high, um, uh, um, structure and, and form and design because it was covered uh, by this green, uh, this is looking up toward it, 
uh, by this green canvas uh, to, to prevent birds and bats uh, from uh, hanging off of the, the, the roof and uh, the, of the ceiling and for their droppings to come and soil um, you know, the, the floor of the mosque. So what we did uh, was remove that. And now you see, can I have the next please? Now you see what it looks like um, today um, as you go in. And this is only really a very small section of what uh, you will find in the whole, in the whole mosque. Um, the next slide. So apart from the restoration, one of the briefs was, as you saw in the earlier um, slide, in the second slide, one of our briefs was to come up with a new management office because the, the career said, look, you know, we need to be able to um, have rooms for our religious teaching. We need to have better facilities. Um, and so what we did was we removed uh, uh, and, and, and demolished what had been a structure which was built in the 1970s that was not very, um, from, uh, from a usage point of view, not, not in such good condition. And we introduced here um, a, a rectangular annex um, with a central yard, courtyard, as if it was mimicking um, the, the, the buildings within that, that context of the site. Because if you look at the plan, you will see on the leftmost is the, um, the ablution pond, which was rectangular and had a, a, an open uh, roof courtyard. And on the right-hand side, in the mosque in the middle, and on the right-hand side, the new administrative building. So we followed this as a secondary access, and we kept the axis, uh, you know, intact. Um, and finally, I just want to mention, can I have the next slide, please? Some of the issues and challenges and drivers. Um, I've mentioned uh, quite a few of these. You know, we needed to meet the community needs, but because uh, it was a project run by the state, run by the religious authorities, and having the sultans, um, um, uh, the royal household, you know, look over, overlook whatever we were doing, it was sometimes very quite difficult to engage with the community. But what I want to just show you the the, the look, bring your attention to the photo of the man on the right or the photograph on the right. And the image on the right shows a man in a wheelchair. And on our first visit, um, on one of our first early visits, we met him. And uh, we were talking to him and he said that, you know, this was his local mosque and it was some, a place that he used to go to as a child. And, uh, but because he had had an accident and he lost uh, his, his legs and he was um, wheelchair bound, he could no longer um, walk into um, the mosque or, 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 or say his prayers within the space. And it was his one desire, he told us, um, that he wanted to be able to do that um, because there were no ramps, there was no access, you know, disabled access. There was nothing that was, you know, made it um, um, accessible to him. And I think that if we want to talk about a driver, that was one of the things that drove us quite very much within uh, you know, the thinking of um, meeting the needs of the congregation, how, what we were going to do, making sure that there were ramps and there was um, enough space and the, the, the right type of space to meet their um, needs, their desires. And um, sadly, I think, and tragically, uh, a few weeks before the mosque was reopened to the public, um, we learned that he had, um, unexpectedly um, met with an accident and passed away. So I think that for us, that was extremely sad, but also um, for me, I think his spirit, you know, will always stay with, with, with me when I think of, of uh, you know, the work that we did with this project. Um, can I just have the last slide that just says, if you are interested in any, um, you know, finding out more about this, um, our email, can I have the last slide please? Our email addresses are there. Uh, you can contact um, uh, Hafizi, who is the architect um, responsible for the project, linear architect. And um, Helena um, was the uh, conservation architect and I was the conservator on the project. And this is um, what you see now is um, the mosque, the mausoleum on the side. Uh, beside that, you will see the, the, the wudu. 
and then the new administrative building and in the back with the gold dome is the palace um, of the Sultan of Selangor. So you can imagine we were being looked down upon and it, the project was being quite well observed, I think, throughout um, the restoration period. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Cordoza is the comprehensive and very informative presentation. Actually, the same project uh, uh, from the previous Moscow, but alter, but different approaching and decision design. Okay, uh, the last uh, presenter, I would like invite uh, Architecture Angalatif. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Okay. Uh, I will share uh, his uh, CV. Angela is associate director, senior architect. Uh, he got the bachelor architect from Universitas Catholic uh, Parahyangan, and he already handled and designed many project, villa, apartment, mosque, and etc. Angela uh, have experienced uh, more than fifty years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fifteen, maybe. Fifteen. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, time is yours. Okay. Thank you, Biasi. Uh, let me share. Has anyone seen the screen already? Can everyone see the screen? Yes. Yes. It's very okay. clear. Yes. Okay, thank you. So um, thank you for the time. I, I'll start with um, this sharing session. Uh, this project is uh, Masjid Al Irshad. So it's basically a mosque in uh, in uh, in a township environment uh, uh, just outside of uh, Bandung. So I'll start with uh, some data here. So it was designed in 2009. And it was um, finished in 2010 and has, has been used since then. Uh, its capacity is for 1,500 um, jama'ah. And alhamdulillah, it uh, has already received um, some awards uh, from our daily and some other medias and also from the, our uh, EIE award in, back in 2018. But to understand the context a little bit, uh, I'm going to be quite a little bit fast here. So it's situated 25 kilometers from the Bandung. Bandung is um, the capital of West Java in Indonesia. It's situated on the hill, on the hillside, surrounded by the pool that owned by um, foundation. So this mosque is owned by the foundation that uh, built school around the, the mosque. So the land itself is very, very uh, in, in the top of the hill. So if you stand up in the in the in the side, then you all you can see is the your background is the mountain, and this is the picture that um, heading to the Kibla. And as you can see here, the 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 view is very stunning. So this is where the the imagination start, and rather than we build a, a hijab between the 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 mihrab and and the outside, uh, we try to open. The, the mosque. Uh, let me set back a little bit about the historical context. So Indonesia, we have so many mosques uh, from the so many uh, period. Like for this one is uh, built, I think, yeah, 1549. Uh, it's one of the ancient mosques uh, built with, um, if you're familiar with Balinese style, maybe you can say it's a bit Balinese style because all the bricks, all the all the uh, uh, door shape style like that, because it's uh, represent the acculturations between the Islam at that time with the pre-Islamic culture previously. Uh, this is uh, also from 1879. This is this is in Banda Aceh. Uh, this one where the mosque started to use the dome for uh, for for mosque. And this one entering the modern period, this is 1964, this is in Bandung. This is very, very modern mosque. The reason I 
brought up about the historical uh, mosque is um, just to remind us that uh, what we think the current mosque uh, that we usually see now in Indonesia is our culture is not uh, only that type of mosque. We have so many diverse uh, typology of mosque. And also uh, when we start designing, we we do some small research on the Quran. Uh, uh, what what is uh, what is the suggestions from 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 the the Quran or the the Hadith about the mosque? So we found only two. Actually, there are so many, but what we what we always keep in mind when we design mosque is these two. So the first one is there are no specific geometry or shape that associated with mosque. So with this term that mosque can be uh, mosque can be designed with any other shape that you don't have to worry it's associated to other things the second one the most important is of course the open uh, op, uh, wide span so avoid column in main prayer area so it's also uh, our small research because we need to remind this to not all but most of the people think that the dome structure in Indonesia is uh, originally uh, belongs to the um, um, Islamic architectures. So we have to remind them that uh, not, the dome is not originally um, an, an Islamic architecture, but um, it has been used for many centuries, uh, many other uh, typology of uh, religious building around the world. So uh, with that background, we come up with some design principles. So uh, this is the more or less the site, if you see from Ariel, um, we would like to keep the, the shape of the geometry of the building is cube because we thought it represent the, the one as the geometry, it represent the modernness because it's very simple. And as a philosophy, it represent the, the singleness of the God. So, um, because it's centralized and it's uh, probably some of them, uh, some of us uh, may refer this to Kaaba in in Mecca. So yeah, it's it's uh, inspired from from those simple shape. And the next principle we we want to add to this mosque is uh, as the other uh, uh, presenter also mentioned, and uh, we thought that the problem with most of the mosque is. Uh, Sometimes the operational costs become too high because in if they didn't put a proper uh, air circulations, a proper uh, natural lighting, then they will have to use um, artificial lighting and air conditioner. Uh, that will increase the bill of electricity, maintenance, and etc. So then we 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 want to we want to create as much as airflow as possible in this mosque so then we uh, also we 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 let the natural lighting uh, comes during the daylight therefore we create the wall the breathing wall as you can see in the further back that is the breathing wall that can uh, create an airflow into the mosque as an identity we choose the to rather than um islamic pattern we use the calligraphy so we create the super graphic uh, calligraphy uh assisted by by the specialities and then then we create uh that as a as a identity on the facade also we put in mind that the landscape uh because the mosque is uh Actually, it's a public building, so we want the landscape as a public space, so people can use this if any uh, in, in any other occasions, like a wedding or something like that. People can use this because this is uh, in the township area. They they need this area to be used as a public space. So the idea uh, having the building is uh, square and central is also um, surrounded by circle. Uh, circle pond uh, to reduce the heat during the daylight, uh, daytime, sorry, uh, 
uh, and the circle comes from the represent the tawaf ritual during the Hajj when when Muslim people goes to Hajj, yeah. And uh, we pick the calligraphy, the tawhid, because that is the basic uh, principle of the Muslims. And yeah, this is what I mentioned before. This is the breathing wall. So basically, if you see the gray wall, is the solid brick that we uh, especially uh, laid in uh, tectonic ways. And then the black one is the one who let the air flow through the wall. So the graphic, those graphic uh, were uh, laid by the this black brick. And for the interior, well, we also put uh, the 99 Asmaul Husna name uh, in the lightings. So there, there is 99 indoor lightings up on the ceilings. Uh, I never counted it's, it's 99, but I believe it is. Um, there's, uh, yeah, this is all to represent the Asmaul Husna. So here's how the plan. So it's very, very simple because it's next to the school. So if you see the building on the left is the, is the school, yeah. So uh, then uh, here are some details about the breathing wall we create. So we uh, ordered especially the solid one and the, and the hollow one. Uh, to create the, the 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 airflow and the hollow one is a bit uh, a bit um, wider of course uh, this is more or less the detail so yeah the light can come through the the the, the air also yeah I, this is uh the, the overall image, the uh, exterior image. During the night, we also put the uh, light inside. This is the landscape area, it can be used by people. So in the daylight, uh, I think I have the few here. Yeah. If you face to the mihrab, uh, you can see all the, the the view, the background view, the mountain, uh, the, the hillside. And it became, because the mosque is uh, in Indonesia facing, the Qiblat is facing to the west side. So uh, during Asar time, after 3 or 4 p.m. until the dawn, it's become very poetic because the you can see the sunset just in front of those big windows. Yeah, more or less like this. And this is the image of the mihrab if you see from the other side. I think that all I can share, thank you. If there's any questions. Thank you, Buyasi, for the time. Yeah. Thank you very much, architect Angalatif. It's a very informative uh, design, yeah, and then very dramatic design. Uh, I can uh, conclude the same link approaching the design, uh, existing building and a new building. Uh, every architect, every uh, designer respond to the context uh, about historical uh, climate, local material, local people. Yeah, uh, we invite uh, participants to discuss or uh, to uh, comment, any idea, please. I would like to check the... I only find one question from Mu Yang Anak Gawing to Architect Sao In. Uh, do you want to uh, uh, speak directly, Mu Yang Anak Gawi? 
Hello. Okay, I will uh, read the question. They want a question. The who did the before that 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 present this one is a. Uh, the the one is a let let question this one. Uh, sorry. They want a question for the masjid in Malaysia before that is uh, present there. The, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This one. Yeah. This that that is still building on the okay. Maybe any question from the participant? Uh, I just curious about the adusan. Yeah. yeah. I have uh, one question. How to strategy design to the first step? Actually, the first step uh, goes to Pak Eko Krawoto. Yeah? Uh, how to respond the context? The first step uh, you did, what is the strategy design to contact uh, respond? And the second, I saw handmade structure. How about the strength of the structure, uh, Pak Eko Krawoto? Hello, Pak Eko Prawato, are you here? Uh, yes, but sorry, my internet connection is not stable. Yeah. It's okay, Pak. Uh, the question is how to the first step uh, strategy design to respond the context? Because I see uh, it's a very unique design, yeah? Uh, you explore about the material, explore the new design. I think it's a very beyond design. And the second uh, question, uh, I saw handmade structure. Now, how about the strength of the structure? Uh, can you explain, Pa? Uh, yes, thank you. I think um, how to make it uh, fit with the context in this uh, sense, in this case, is a landscape. I believe that the material is very, very important. So the material, we choose the material, which is already part of the landscape. So we are not, uh, in a way, not adding uh, different kind of materials, but this is a material which is already part of the landscape, in this case, a stone. And a uh, stone we don't uh, create uh, like um, uh, we don't treat it as a new material, but we rather choose it uh, to create to to use stone as uh, archaic material. So we just place it uh, as it is. Yes, of course there are some uh, reinforcement inside, but we we try to to hide it actually especially in a rather high structure. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, what I could answer. And in a way, uh, we are thinking about the design which is able to uh, execute it by the, the villager. So without any uh, high skill. Uh, so, and it's also, not really um, uh, the worker can make mistakes so to say so so it's open uh, it's very tolerant and it's not very mm -hmm. precise so mm -hmm. uh, yeah this is the character of the design so uh, i think uh, yeah thank you yeah thank you pa uh, echo uh, i can conclude that the different uh, not precision it's a uh, very it's very uh, interesting and unique uh, design yeah because it's a uh, handmade yeah pak eko prawoto yeah yeah it's also the character of uh, yeah. uh, the nature itself is organic so to say yeah yes yes thank <laughs> yeah. you very much pak uh, eko prawoto uh, dear participant i would like invite to discuss please maybe uh, among the presenter can discuss. It's okay. 
Uh, I, I have a question. Okay, please. Uh, it's about the library temple, Thailand by Skang, is it? Yeah, uh, but yeah. I'm sorry, uh, Skang is not uh, joined this. Uh, yeah, he's not joined this. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, then, I can uh, explain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's okay. The, another one is uh, about the mosque by Angga Latif. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I like how you started with the association of the hadith about not associating with a specific geometry and shapes for Islam because that's part of the core teachings actually. But I'm just wondering, like, uh, there's one question, that, uh, a few questions that are raised in the design, which is, uh, what if there's no differentiation with other buildings so it doesn't it's too open you know is will it be a problem or what was the position there and then the other one is about the rock that you showed in front of the stuff allah in the rock is it is it okay to have that <laughs> or uh, is it, yeah because it's also i don't know a bit like representation or something so i'm just wondering how do you answer that yes no, that's fine okay uh so yeah uh, i can answer that um thank you for asking that is that is also uh yeah so many uh, other people also 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 wondering about that uh, but for the for the first questions i think um uh, maybe it's rather uh opinion from me yeah? uh it's okay to have um uh, an open uh, not very, very notable directly as a, like a signage or kind of like that to differentiate between the mosque and other building. But then that's why we at 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 that mosque we 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 try to put the identity in the facade uh, with uh, calligraphic. So even though the shape is very very modern. Uh, very very simple and then not 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 a single um islamic pattern were attached even though the if you know the the minara the minaret is also uh, with the same modern shape so it's not like um the usual mosque we found every day yeah uh, yeah. yeah but then also uh, we thought that it will be difficult for because it the mosque is situated in the township yeah uh, people to find out about the mosque where is the mosque because we couldn't see the moon shape we can see the arabic uh, um, font like that and but then it turns out it's because it's um very uh how to say simple modern um geometry People remember that that the cube is the mosque. So yeah, that's that's also new for me. So yeah, people also, if someone asks where's the mosque, and you, you just point that cube box in front of the school is the mosque. Yeah, so that's uh, one of the the uh, the answers that come up. For the second questions, I think um, it's also became. Um, uh, question from from some of the people why we put the the lafaz Allah in the in the in the metal carving like that uh, floating in the water, but then uh, the idea is not uh, not directly um, facing that store, uh, metal uh, sculpture, but then it's also it's only for reminder. It's same like. Uh, you have a um, calligraphy drawing hanging on the wall in front of uh, one of your mosque. Maybe it's uh, basically it's the same like that, but then this is in a three-dimensional shape. But yes, it has become um, back and forth uh, uh, discussions or argumentations. So at that time, we leave it to the foundations who also run the mosque so we we leave it to them if they don't want to use it it's okay but if they think it's okay to use it then we'll feel free to 
to do it. So yeah, but then they they feel free to do that. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Pak Anggalatif and Pak Atmal Suhaimi. Uh, any question? Oh, compliment for Pak Anggalatif. Really appreciate the interpretation of Mosh Q, not taking the dome, the typical imagery. How did you design the roof and manage the opening? Would love the to experience the setting sun. Well done and thank you. Well, thank you. So yeah, uh, the appreciation goes to the team, all the teams and the if i can if i can comment on this questions actually why we 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 taking the dome of the typical imagery we because uh, we done quite a lot of uh, mosque design and um, therefore that's a little bit forcing me to do the research what's what's uh what's behind all the history of the mosque design in indonesia then and after we experience with um, some clients and we found some literatures and uh, we thought that it is important to tell the people also what we, maybe we in, in architecture, everyone must have um, learned about the history of, of the dome and extra, but then people outside the architecture world maybe doesn't know that. So that therefore I think it's important for me to share that as a part of the knowledge. And the roof is very simple. Actually, it's metal roof. Uh, and the openings is strictly from only from the walls, not from the roof, because we try to, because the rain in, in our city is quite uh, high, the density. So we try to minimize the, the potential of leaking. So yeah, we try to make the roof as simple as possible and create the openings only from the wall, only from the side. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you, Pak Angga Latif. Yeah. Uh, maybe the next uh, suggestion uh, for Elizabeth Cordoza and architect Ching Sao In. Uh, maybe any suggestion based your experience? Uh, for the next design or fight or uh, religion building, what is important thing so be con uh, consider? I know so well that Elizabeth Cordoza uh, have uh, very passionate about heritage. Uh, maybe uh, Elizabeth, Mrs. Elizabeth Cordova can explain uh, what is the important thing so be considered to uh, design or redesign fight or religion building. This, Mrs. Uh, Cordova. I think that, you know, at, at the end of the day, it really is about function, form, mm -hmm. and, and function, really. And, and um, the, the people who are using it, so the, the, the community who needs it and, and what they want to use it and how they want to use it. Um, and I think that one of the problems we faced with this particular mosque was the fact that they wanted it to be air-conditioned because um, just give me a minute yeah they wanted it to be air-conditioned because you know it, it the ambient temperature um now um as compared to 1933 you know is you know many many degrees i'm talking about climate change and things like that and so one of the, 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 the issues is the expectation now is that, oh, well, you know, let's close it all up and let's um, air condition it. Um, and uh, we uh, looked at the option of the possibility of closing it. But if you see the, um, the, the, the main prayer hall and you look at all the openings and, and the fact that it, you know, it goes up four stories, um, that whole context would be completely prohibitive and wasteful and um and it would detract i think from um the 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 spirit of the original um design so in conservation what we try to do and what we try to make sure that we do is to take these things into consideration when we are looking at new interventions 
So we were able to add in fans. We were able to add in more points for fans. Uh, you know, that were standing, that were movable, because it depends on the size, because sometimes you have a full congregation, let's say on, on, on Friday and Jama'a prayers, but you may not have that, you know, for your, your normal weekday uh, um, situation. So you didn't really need that, uh, that amount of, of space, shall we say, or that, that amount of, of uh, electrical fittings, yeah, to go into that. So those are the kinds of things that we, we, always taken into consideration when we're doing um, conservation work. The other thing that I think in terms of when we were looking at the new building, um, we needed to, you know, bear in mind what the, um, the imam wanted um, and, and what they needed. Because there was a little, sometimes a little bit of a disconnect between what you want, your aspiration. So they wanted a three-story building. They wanted to have lots of classrooms. They want... You know, and then the whole thing is, you know, if you want to make uh, what we, but they also wanted a hall and they wanted, you know, and so we looked at that and we said, actually, we can turn, um, we can convert, um, you know, a space, we can, we can divide a space, you know, using um, a partition, sliding uh, doors, we can open it, we can close it, we can use them for the, so it becomes multifunctional in that sense. Um, and we can use the atrium, the, the, the central uh, atrium, you know, for, for um, events, but also for, for, it could be open for other kinds of activities, including um, teaching and learning and that kind. So we, we, we tried to make sure that we were, we were conscious of um, ensuring that it was multifunctional, um, but to meet then, you know, the needs of, part of the research was, you know, so how many people do you have in a class? And if you're going to be doing this, you know, what do you need? And that's the kind of research that I think that, you know, all the other projects have talked about, you know, in, in our case, we had to deal not so much with the individual or the, the larger career, uh, but our principal, uh, you know, stakeholders were actually the the authorities and, and the mosque leaders, the leaders of, of, of the, the, it is a religious site. And they have particular needs. So, so those are the kind of things that we took into consideration. Um, we were able to deflect uh, the business of uh, the air conditioning uh, because we were able to provide um, other kinds of uh, facilities, and we could um, provide a movable, uh, you know, standalone um, air conditioning units that could be put in and then removed. Uh, in, in the process, but we also, the other thing specifically actually to do with MOS was the best relief. Um, the expectation, as you saw from the earlier photos of when we took over, you know, everything was painted white. This, this notion of having uh, a multicolor, um, you know, and, and, and patterns and designs and that kind of landscape uh, was not uh, a visual landscape, yeah, was not seen as not so much acceptable, but was not seen as proper. Um, and there was quite a lot of resistance at the beginning, but because in the process of doing the restoration of the Bas Relief, people were coming to the mosque and saying, my goodness, this is so amazing. And because people were amazed at how beautiful it was and how spiritually uplifting it was, um, the Karia, who were quite against it at the beginning, you know, uh, decided that hey, actually it's a good thing and, and developed their own sense of pride in that place. And I think that that to us was an important learning or an important takeaway, I think, you know, from the process. I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. It's very comprehensive and give much insight and idea. Uh, maybe the last question uh, for the architect Ching Sao In. Actually, the same uh, question, but maybe you have any suggestion uh, with different perspective. Architect Ching Sao In. Hey, um, I I just maybe share a bit on uh, my my thoughts. Uh, most um, in the context of Malaysia. The, besides the religious role, they are very important public building. Um, in every new township uh, planning, 
mosque uh, is always allocated at uh, a very important place. So uh, this particular mosque that uh, we completed in Cyberjaya, it was actually a satellite new town. And um, the next to the mosque is actually a affordable housing of 960 units. So you have 960 family living next to the mosque. So um, we try to imagine the role of the mosque in the future when the towns will become denser and more crowded, uh, when land become more scarce and then buildings and people will fight for you know, green lung. So we look at the role of the mosque besides serving the purpose of the religious, it could become a center for communities. So the, the mosque is actually surrounded by very large uh, gardens. And we actually planted a lot of uh, fruit trees, you know, rambutans, coconut, and all that. So in the future, when the whole gardens mature, you can actually serve the uh, community when they can drop by. And besides the main hall, the praying hall, uh, in the compound of the mosque, there is also a dialysis center and also a room, uh, a house for Imam and Bilal. And then there are many community services uh, surrounding together with the mosque. So it's not just uh, for praying only. Yeah. Yeah, that's all from, from me, basically. Yeah. By the way, thank if, you. I, thank I, you. Thank you. Yes. If I can excuse uh, for the session, because I thought it will be ended uh, around eight. Uh, because here in Malaysia, we just resume uh, uh, our the, the the lockdown. We start to open up, and then some of the site uh, the 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 site matters start to pop up today. A lot of them come up, so I actually uh, need to get back to them by today on certain urgent matter on the site. If I can be excused. Okay. 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 I think okay. we are almost at the end of the almost at the end of the session already, right? Yeah. Okay, 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 thank you. Yeah, uh, maybe the last question for the four uh, presenter. Uh, maybe you can short answer about the four nation collaboration. Do you have any idea for the activity for nation? Please, uh, from the uh, the first part, Eko Prawoto. <laughs> maybe any idea for activity for nation collaboration? Yes, I think that the challenge that we are facing for the future is how to, to save the planet. And we have to learn a lot of uh, knowledge from, from other uh, architects from other countries. And I believe that this will be very useful, especially for the inspiration for the next uh, generation of uh, every architect in, in every country. This, we have to learn about new knowledge, I think, uh, to save the planet for the future. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. It's a very good uh, theme. Yeah, uh, the next uh, architect, uh, Anga Latif, please. Okay, yeah, I think it's a very good one. So yeah, even though we're in this very weird situation, we can still learn from each other and and also, I found it very interesting because we share it in uh, in a similar theme, so we can share uh, various perspective in our uh, each other respective project. Yeah, so like mm -hmm. I can yes. I can very understand, and I can I I I get so much impression from what Sao is doing in, in 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 Malaysia. Yeah, I think it's very good and. Uh, it's really nice if we can see each other in in an in union in an event, but then this is already mm -hmm. the cure for us in these situations. Thank you yeah. again for all and participants by call. Terima kasih banyak sharingnya. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Latif. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe architect uh, Ching Sao In. Do you have any idea for the coronation event? Activity. I think it's um, very grateful that um, to pull everyone together. I think it's, it's, it's very, very challenging. I can imagine the effort <laughs> to pull everyone together. So, and uh, most importantly, I think is the dialogue. 
I think the starting, this is just a starting. I think when we start to have dialogues and critical discussion, I think it will, it will, it will spark new ideas and, and create new meaningful uh, things. Yeah. yeah, That's all from my side. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Martin. And the last, uh, the only beautiful woman, <laughs> Mrs. Elizabeth uh, Cordoza. Do you have any idea activity for the uh, nation among the four countries? I think picking up on uh, what Pak Eko was saying, talking about, um, about you know, climate change is, is a concern for, for yes. anyone and everyone. And the fact that I think all the projects showed the way in which they were able to um, not just incorporate, but actually to ensure that, um, you know, the environment was very much cared for, I think is a lesson for everyone. Um, whether it's restoration, whether it's new build, whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, um, looking at, um, you know, in doing some insertions within a site, like a religious route, you know, um, and how also I think the other lesson for me, a takeaway is how impressed I was with the fact that the communities, the individual communities are very much involved in physically um, in a lot of the projects um, that we saw you know, that were physically involved in the work that was being carried out. And that to me, you know, is, is because then they own it um, and they will care for it. And that really is, is something that I think architects, I work, come from a cultural background. So, you know, for me, that is really important. And I think it's really impressive to see that architects, you know, who, you know, who, who, and, and, other professionals, yeah, who work in the built environment are beginning, you know, are, are embracing that. So yeah, that's for me. Yeah. Um, and the foundation uh, should then continue that way. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, maybe I can uh, conclude uh, the point of the from the presenter about uh, save the planet, how to respond to climate change, giving inspiration, learn and share each other among the uh, the country and uh, I love the state from uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Cordoza uh, for nation sustainable yeah activity sustainable thank you very much uh, for the all participant and for the uh, presenter it's I'm very grateful can as a moderator uh, I think collaboration make me more strength and give enrichment idea and insight. It's very useful. Lucky me as a moderator. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, can I ask one? Uh, maybe we can uh, photo session <laughs> because it's. I think it's it's very uh, amazing. Yeah, amazing webinar. Yeah, we can share each other. We can discuss each other. Yeah. We have uh, two slides, one slide, and the second slide. Could you please uh, open the the camera? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Uh, the the slide one. Okay, the next slide. One, two, three. Okay, thank you very much uh, for architect Eko Priawoto, architect Ching Sao In, uh, architect Elizabeth Cordoza. Oh, sorry. Uh, not architect, but very passionate in heritage, architect Angga Latif. Yeah. Stay safe, stay healthy. Maybe we can uh, meet offline. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. You can leave uh, the webinar. Thank you very much.